The space of epigenomics is really the space of developing a new modality of testing. It provides us with information that sequence-based techniques alone won't be able to provide. Uh, and it helps us understand uh, and put in context the information that we do find from sequence-based testing. Uh, and for our patients, having answers uh, is everything. Uh, to our clinicians, being able to uh, provide definitive answers and act upon them is everything for them. London Health Sciences and Western are making real change with respect to our translational research work and our clinical work in genetics, uh, and particularly epigenetics. As you can imagine, in child neurology, uh, there's a large number of kids who have um, neurodevelopmental disorders that we're not able to diagnose quickly. For many kids in neurology, there is this, what we call it, you know, this diagnostic odyssey that, that is a real journey for, for families to, to go through before we can settle on that, uh, you know, that moment where we, we can tell a family very definitively the reason they've had these developmental differences is because of, of this specific condition. And, and in fact, to have families have something tangible, a name, a label, is very important for them. They it allows them um, to, to have something more concrete, you know, uh, for themselves to un try and understand and have more control over the situation. With respect to our epigenetic work, we're able to take some of those cases and provide answers. And we're able to do that uh, in a first visit, uh, as opposed to after years of searching. What epigenetic uh, assessment allows us to do is to uh, uh, systematically assess, uh, assess for changes in uh, the function of that protein that may be harbored within the DNA sequence itself or around the DNA sequence that we're currently sequencing. Uh, it also allows us to interpret sequences that we don't know how to currently interpret. In other words, when there is a defect in the gene, there is a consequent epigenotype, uh, or we refer to it as epi sign. So by screening or by assessing genome-wide DNA methylation, we can always identify when there's a defect in a gene, regardless of, of whether or not we can actually interpret the DNA sequence itself. This is where epi signature testing or epi sign is really a new modality for the first time. I would say in history of genetic testing, we're able to, without ambiguity, ascertain whether or not a particular gene is actually defected or not with high level of accuracy, uh, clinical sensitivity and specificity. So we now have a list of about 20 or so disorders that we've published for which we can use this testing to resolve uh, patients that haven't had a diagnosis for a very long time oftentimes. Uh, we are able to resolve patients that had reported variants of unknown clinical significance through genetic testing. And we're now able to also screen patient populations as a primary screen. Uh, and we've described it in some of our recent uh, publications. This is huge. This is, it's as, as significant as getting a diagnosis in the first place. How you get to that uh, is not relevant. Having it is what's relevant. And what we're so excited about in our epigenetic work is that we can give more patients and more clinical teams those answers that they need. And doing that then allows them to manage care, plan for their future. Uh, in some cases, cases are uh, treatable. Uh, they can open doors for clinical trials. There's a whole range of options that become available that without a diagnosis, without a result, uh, those doors remain firmly closed. That's real change. Uh, and we've only just begun. Knowledge knows no boundaries. And fortunately, it doesn't respect city, it doesn't respect province, it doesn't respect country. And that's a good thing about the knowledge. London Health Sciences Center has been very fortunate, especially through the, the relations built up through our molecular genetics lab to work to serve not only the patients of our, of our province, of Ontario and of Canada, but we've developed strong international relationships in the U.S. and in Europe that allows us to see a broader set of patients and a broader database. The more data that comes into the EpiSign test, the more we're learning every time. So it's really that international um, ability to take the test out there and to learn from it every day.
We're now uh, roughly at about 30 uh, or so conditions for which we have a very unique and specific epigenetic signatures, uh, some of which are yet to be uh, published. And uh, the research work obviously is continuing to happen in the background while we are uh, currently uh, using some of what we've already published and discovered to provide uh, direct patient care through clinical testing through our collaborator uh, laboratories across the world. I think in many ways epigenetics is something that we've only just begun to understand the potential for uh, supporting patient care on. We're excited to be a center that's really pushing that head forward uh, and we're really looking forward to meeting other organizations that want to contribute to this effort and work together with us on it.